Hello? Okay, okay. Okay, I have like a question. You gotta be 18 plus. Guys, only send the guest request if you're a Christian and if you're 18 plus, please. God bless America. Amen, Benny. Thank you for the cowboy hat. Yeehaw! What's up, Days? Thanks for the shares, Days. What's going on, everybody? Go ahead and send a guest request if you disagree that God supports slavery, murder, and grape. Go ahead and send a guest request if you disagree that the Bible supports slavery, murder, and grape. Go ahead and send a guest request if you disagree that Christianity supports slavery, murder, and grape. But please be 18 plus, guys. Please be 18 plus. Thanks for the shares, Benny. That's how it works. You're just wording it so it sounds bad. I'm literally just reading what, it, what the Bible says, Luke. I'm not wording it in, in any way. I'm just reading what it says. What's up, Dwight? You believe in juicy crust. Amen. Happy 5th of July. Thank you for the join, my team. Guys, consider subscribing to this to this channel if you can. It's it's like $3 a month if, if you're not already subscribing. Joel, what's up, Joel? Please consider subscribing. It's like $3 a month. Thank you for the love. Thank you for the love, guys. I believe in Pastor Buster Cherry. Yes, yes, yes. Pastor Buster Cherry, the head pastor of the church under the Most High, C-U-M-H, Church of Come. Do you believe religion? Do you believe religion should be in schools? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. And you're blocked. <laughs> somebody said. Somebody said. And you're blocked. This isn't an. Uh, this is not an airport. No need to announce your departure. I'm agnostic, but wasn't Jesus proven to be a real person? Uh, yeah, sure. Like. I have no reason to believe that Jesus wasn't a real person, right? But I also have no reason to believe that he rose from the dead like a zombie, right? I've got no reason to believe that Jesus wasn't actually a real person. No reason to not believe that, right? I can say that, but I have no reason to believe that he rose from the dead like a zombie. Keep tapping those likes, guys. Tapping the likes, tapping the like. Oh, we got Patty Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes, what's up? Hello. Now, you gotta be 18 plus. You gotta be 18 plus, guys. <clears throat> Petition to change Easter to Zombie Jesus Day. Why does age matter? Um, for one, I don't want to be talking to kids, and two, it's TikTok's rules. Hello? Hello. Hello, how you doing? Yes, how are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Where is, I don't see slavery in the Bible. Where, where is that located? Oh, uh, God told uh, the Israelites they can own non-Israelites as slaves for life. I don't see that. I see bond. So I'm looking in the Bible right now. I don't see slavery. I see bond servants. I mean, you, you can call them whatever you want, but it says you can own them for life. I see bond servants and I see where here he's giving instructions to the men who are gathering for warfare. So uh, uh, no, it doesn't. Doesn't it doesn't mention war? It, but I mean, like I said, you can call them bond servants, but you, it, it's call them butlers, call them maids, call them. You can try and church it up all you want to, but it says you can own them for I, life. I'm, I'm not trying to church it up. I'm just I'm just being honest with you. I just I just you're not being you're not being honest because you said it, it. You, you said it mentioned war, but it doesn't I, mention war. Yes, I see it here. He says to them, they could take the servants of foreigners, and you translate that. That's prisoners of war. That's he's talking. Uh, foreigners, foreigners translates to prisoners of war. Where, okay, where are they going to get the foreigners from? From the four nations around them. Exactly. So how they? So they're in the wilderness right now, right? That's what you read in Leviticus, aren't they in yeah. the wilderness? Yeah, yeah. So Levit Leviticus twenty-five. 
So, so, so how are they going to conquer people and make them their slaves? Are they going to like? Are they going to get on ships? I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know how they're going to do it. All I know is that God says they're allowed. Got warfare, right? That's how. They uh, got, that's how they got. It doesn't say. Right? It, it doesn't say warfare. But all I know is that God says you're, that they're allowed to go and get slaves. So therefore, God supports slavery. Um, it says I'm looking at the Bible. It says bond service. So I'm just not seeing where you say slavery. Okay, but it, it, are they are they owned for life? Yes. So it's it's slavery. It says here the for, foreigners here translated is foreigners who are POWs from the ancient warfare. What Foreign, f foreigners translated into a prisoner of war? Yes, sir. What? Because uh, let me let can me you, ask you. Can this. you demonstrate? Can you show me that? Can you prove that? I sure can. Uh, so yeah, in, in ancient cultures, uh, did they have prisons? Can you can you prove that foreigners is okay. translated into prisoners of war? Yes. In ancient culture, did they have prisons? So every time the Bible says the word foreigner, that actually translate to a prisoner of war? It is a prisoner of war or it is somebody who you. So, so every time every time the Bible uses the word foreigner, that word translates to a prisoner of war. Depends on the context. If the well, context, the context is what you're reading, he's giving them rules for warfare. It doesn't mention anything about warfare, sir. But well, it does say they, that. Well, how are they going to get the slaves if they don't? I, if they don't I, go to that's war. That's a like how they how they acquire the slaves is irrelevant to me. The only it thing that's is very relevant, because sir. It's the context. Sir, the how they acquire the slaves that God says they're allowed to have is irrelevant to me. The only thing that's relevant to me is that God says that they are allowed to own people as property for life. They are allowed to own people. They are and either even children, of even children, too. Or, OK, they are prisoners of war. It doesn't they, say that. D. Are they criminals? Can you show me where it says that they are prisoners of war? Did you take a humanities class? Can you show me where it says that they are prisoners yes, of war? I can show. I can actually show you that. It's okay. right there what, in the context. What verse? What verse? Re go ahead and read it. Uh, okay. G give me the chapter, the book, and the verse where it says that these Aren't foreigners. Are you in Leviticus chapter twenty-five? Yes. Show me what verse says that this, that these foreigners are prisoners of war. You just read it. I'm asking you for the verse, sir, because I read it and I don't see anything about prisoners of war. The context is prisoners of war. There's where, where, where are you acqui where are you acquiring the context from? Like what well, sentence? I'm what verse? I'm acquiring the context from number one. Israel is in the middle of the wilderness. They own nothing. They own what, zero. What verse are you getting? The, what verse are you getting the context that says that they're prisoners of war? Here, what is giving them instructions? Can you give me the verse? I get the entire verse is for prisoners of war, sir. Which one? Which one? Which verse? The What's the number? The entire chapter, literally the entire chapter. So can you can you be more specific? Can you narrow it down to a single verse? Be specific. I don't know how much more specific I can be. The entire chapter. Literally the entire chapter. So can you show me where what verse says that these that these foreigners that God said that they're allowed to go and well, get? If, I, if I'm in the wilderness and God is saying, when I just I, get, I would just like you to provide the the, the verse I for the claim. I can't provide anything because okay. you keep ignoring the context. Okay, <laughs> if you can't okay if you can't provide the verse, then I'm just going to hold, keep holding my position that God supports the Israelites owning non-Israelites as property for life. Yes, everybody in the ancient world did that. Okay, to, so we agree. We did that to criminals. We did we not agree. have jails. We, we did agree not have that God children. supports. We agree that That's God easy. supports slavery. We okay. Even the Romans did that. Romans did that. Now if that we unalive your brother, in order for that person to make up for your income, I mean, he didn't go to jail and stay for fifty years like it's America, buddy. It's the ancient world. He so worked for you. So, so if you um, were cool with that, that's you. So, D, now that we both agree that God supports slavery, would you like to move on to I, murder? That's a bond servant, sir. That, that's, that's a uh, bond servant. It says you can own them for life. Yes, the criminal, that's, sir. That's, who that's slavery. The uh, commit, the criminal again, who sir, murder. again, again, you're going to have to. You can own them from life. You're going to you have could. to provide the verse. You're going to have to provide the yeah, verse. Who's, it says. Who's going to make up if somebody unalives your, 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 your brother? I'm, and I'm you waiting for the verse, brother, sir. Who's gonna Who's gonna uh, provide the money for you? I, I would like you to provide the verse that says the that these that these foreign, sir, provide the verse that says that these foreign children were prisoners of war. All of them are prisoners of war. It's not. It's not. Provide hard. the verse. I'd like the verse. 
the entire chapter. D, every time you come up here, you say this, but you ne- you've you not ever once given me a verse for this. And you always ignore context. What's the verse? Where, do, what verse? You, okay. You do what a deconstructionist does best. What you verse are you getting? What verse are you getting the context yes, you, from? You know it's the entire chapter. What verse are you getting the context from? Have a great day, kids. Okay. <laughs> Everyone keep spamming those likes, guys. I really appreciate you. Spam the likes, everybody, and click the follow button, guys, and share the live. Please only send a guest request if you are a Christian and if you disagree that God supports slavery, murder, and rape. Hello? You f- (laughs) Who's raising these little hellhounds? Who's raising these little hellhounds? Hello, Pilgrim? Hey, Skits, how you doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you doing? I'm fantastic. Listen, I wanted to tell you, the Lord came inside of me last Ooh. night. Ooh, deep. And he specifically wanted to, to me to tell you, you were mm. doing the Lord's work, good sir. He came in you deep. Did he touch your whole, your soul? Excuse me, did he touch your soul? <laughs> he, yeah, he touched my, uh, he touched my soul, indeed. Yes, indeed. amen. Amen, hallelujah, uh, you're doing the Lord's work. You had the, devil, you had the devil in you, and you got on your knees, and you said, Lord, I'm wide open for you, God. And God pounded the devil out of you. You, the, you needed a good pounding from the Lord, and he gave it to you, brother. Amen. That's- amen. Can we get some amens in the chat? Amen's in the chat for God pounding the devil out of me. Hello? How's it going? Hey, how you doing? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, You were asking a question about, like, is is God okay with slavery, right? God supports uh, slavery. God told the Israelites they can have non-Israelites as slaves for life and own them for life. And And you can pass the slave onto your children when you die. And also you're allowed to beat your slave with a rod with no punishment as long as the slave does not die from the beating. Well, do you know what the uh, the Exodus law is specifically for if you're caught kidnapping somebody? Uh, yeah, like Exodus twenty one sixteen, I think says you can't kidnap somebody. Yep. Yeah, but and that's that's you that was, the death penalty. Yeah, but that. like that's 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 like that's talking about like don't go to your neighbor's house and like your fellow Hebrew. Don't go and kidnap your fellow Hebrew. Don't kidnap a free person. Uh, that's not slavery. That's against kidnapping. No, 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 no. If I'm kidnapping somebody to sell them into slavery, 100%, that's slavery. Okay, Can well, we look, agree on that? E- even if I were to grant you that, like, okay, fine, Exodus 21, 16 says, you know, you can't steal a person, right? Well, then how do you explain Leviticus 25, 44 through 46? Because even if we were to grant you Exodus 21, 16, then you're just admitting a, a contradiction in your book. It's not a contradiction when well, God you, says it is that. because you're provide you're provi- you're giving me a verse that says no no slavery allowed. Well, there's a verse in Leviticus 25 where in fact slavery is allowed. So there's a contradiction. Well, it it's more about the treatment of how you're supposed to treat a slave if you own a slave. Oh, and so, so you, you acknowledge it out of context doesn't make it any more of a smoking gun in your argument respectfully. So, so you acknowledge that God supports slavery. No, no, no. I acknowledge that. Thank you for the corgi butt. Thank you. <laughs> I acknowledge that if someone is caught kidnapping to someone, someone to be sold into slavery, if you're caught, if that person's caught in your possession, that you receive the death penalty. It kind of seems like to me that if like God's moral law says you're put to death, it kind of seems like just hypothetically, if I'm reading it in black and white, that he's not really cool with it. And then on top of that, you then have to reanalyze Exodus completely because he's delivering the the uh, Israelites from Egypt. Right? So, can, so can you explain why God told the Israelites they can have non-Israelites as slaves for life? Uh, well, I believe the law, like, I'm, I'm not an expert on Old Testament law, but it's broken down into three different sections, and I'm not trying to, like, step around it, right? There's ceremonial law, uh, then there is moral law, and then there's civil law for context, right? And when you're examining the ancient Hebrews, because like they lived in a different time period where Rome, I mean, if you if you really look at like how most societies <laughs> were back in the day, they all owned slaves. 
And it's okay. not saying God's okay with it. In fact, yes. God said that yes, none God, of it, God is okay with it. My point. God, look, please you're, kind of, you're kind of rambling. You're kind of rambling. I'm not. I'm not really rambling. I'm rambling there's about an, on some points. There, there's an enti- I there's an sir, your points, preacher. Where I can't preacher. There's an entire list of things that God says you are not allowed to do. Slavery is not on that list. In fact, the opposite. God gave very specific rules and instructions and regulations to the Israelites, instructing them on how to practice slavery. Do you know why God told the Israelites that they're allowed to practice slavery? It's because God supports slavery. If God didn't support slavery, he would have said, don't do slavery the same way he said, don't wear mixed fabrics, don't eat shellfish, don't lie, don't murder, don't disobey your parents. God could have added slavery to that list of don'ts, but he didn't. He put it on the list of things that are morally permissible. Then why why do we ha- why do we have to set them free after seven years? You, that's for your Hebrew slaves, not the foreign slaves. Whoa, whoa, whoa! No, no, no! That th- that's not even reading that in the proper context, sir. Have you ever have you have you Hebrew slaves in that specific text? Have you ever even have you ever even read Leviticus twenty five forty four through forty six, where God says you can own foreigners as property for life? Yeah, I've read Leviticus. Absolutely. Yeah. So I, I'm, the- I'm telling you, you're also like, like Leviticus is also a part of ceremonial law. And when Jesus died on the cross, he fulfilled the ceremonial law. So technically speaking, it's a moot point. So you agree that God supports slavery? No, I don't. Okay, in fact, show me, show dude, me in the Bible I'm where God says. I'm quoting the don't Bible verse. Show I'm literally me, quoting me. Exodus show twenty-one where- sixteen. Is, that is my not, proof that God's not okay with slavery, and well, God even well, well makes then it why did he, clear that we're all created in God's image, and not uh, all of us are equal. All so, of preacher, us. preacher, if if God is not okay with slavery, then why did He tell the Israelites that they are allowed to have slaves for life? Then why didn't God destroy you for all the sin that you've done? Can you answer the question, sir? I, I mean, I'm well. No, they're sinful humans that have free will, and they took slaves. Like you're, you're really because God, like, because God instructed them to. Well, then, what about the Romans? What about uh, the? Can you stop Roman pivoting? Empire? Can you stop pivoting and explain to me? No, how- no, no. I'm not pivoting. There are other groups of people that had slaves, including you're, Egypt. You're claiming that God is not okay with slavery. If, if, really that, if that is true, then explain to me why God told the Israelites they can have slaves and own them for then life. Explain why in Exodus it has Exodus twenty one sixteen in it. If, wow, if I if I grant you if if I grant you if I grant you that Exodus twenty one sixteen is God saying don't have slaves, well then we have a contradiction in your book. It's really not a contradiction, and just okay. because you imply let's run that with that. a contradiction doesn't let's, let's, mean it is. Let, let's run with that. Let's let's say Exodus twenty one sixteen is God saying don't have slaves. Okay, fair, fine. There's a verse. There's a verse that says God says don't you have put slaves. To death if you kidnap somebody. Yep. Okay, fine, fine, for fine. The we'll, purpose of selling them into slavery. So, Absolutely. So so, okay, so we're going to grant glad that. We agree on that. We're, oh, no, I'm granting you that. I'm granting you that Exodus twenty one sixteen. Well, I, don't, I, I don't care if you grant it. Hold on, let me point out. Or it is written. It's let me point out. Let me point out uh, if we do grant that as God saying no slaves well then in Leviticus 25 44 through 46 God says you specifically that you can have slaves so oh contradiction so those people that were taken into slavery I'm just curious address address the contradiction address the contradiction Address the contradiction. Yeah, Exodus, because, it, for, because if it we is it, written in Exodus twenty one sixteen that it states that anyone who kidnaps someone is to be put to death. Okay, what, so no, what, so no now, slavery, what, right? What, what part of that are you uh, misinterpreting? Because so, it clearly states that if you're caught kidnapping okay. someone, you're put to death. So, so Exodus twenty one sixteen is God saying no slavery, right? I mean, he's not saying it bluntly, but if you're receiving the death penalty of it, okay. it means you won't be able to do it again. All right. Well, let's adre- address the contradiction then, because if Exodus twenty one sixteen means no slaves, then in Leviticus twenty five forty four through forty six, God says, in fact, you can have slaves. Address your, address the contra- uh, the contradiction in your book there. I mean, I already addressed the difference on ceremonial law versus civil law versus moral law. Moral law is different than civil law, and this anybody is... can explain that to you. Right. So, so can this we is the first time I've ever had a. Pa- are you a pastor? 
No, I am not. Oh, okay. I, I, I genuinely am just an evangelist. I was going to say, this is the first time I've ever had a pastor admit that there's a contradiction in his book. It's not a contradiction. Wait, like, th wait, how is it? No, 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 how, no, how, no, hold on. I, one okay, verse says, actually, one verse says God. Address this, right? So if the ceremonial law says that uh, Jews can't eat pork, yet then in, uh, in Matthew, I believe it is, that Jesus then declares all food ceremonially clean, am I supposed to not eat pork? I don't even, even know what, I don't even know I don't even know what you're yapping about right now. Yeah, exactly. I, I thought we were talking about slavery. No, no, no. I'm bringing up another point because you want to say that there's contradictions. Then you explain to me the cross re that there's you're, over 63,000 you're, cross no, references you're, you're in the saying, New Old Testament. You're saying that Exodus 21:16 is God saying slavery is wrong. Well, in Leviticus 25, God says no, you well, can have slaves. Well, listed as a crime to kidnap someone and to sell well, them. Then, well, then why? Well, then why does like a few? Well, then why does in Leviticus God say you can have slaves? What, what's why is there a contradiction in your book here? It, it's not a contradiction. If you get caught, there's a difference in between like because like in the in the first century. To like, uh, you're talking six, seven, eight hundred plus years before Jesus is born through the Virgin so, Mary, right? So if one you're one verse saying almost up to six thousand years is like pre Old what, Testament law. I don't know what well, you're talking about. It, one well, verse one verse says God says no slaves. Another verse God says you can have slaves. Is that a contradiction? It's not. <laughs> You're laughing, but it's not funny. Like, one one like, verse. If, if, the, if the crime is you kidnap someone and put them in binds and chains and they're sold if God says, slavery, if God, God says, says no, if God says, says um, if God says you can't have slaves, and then there's another verse where God says you can have slaves, is that a contradiction? No, it really isn't. What? Because there, there's context for it. Oh my gosh, this What's is the context is... for Leviticus. Would okay. you? Well, in fact, I'll pull sir, it up. Hold on. This is the reason what, what why. Specific, no, no, Exodus, no. What, what specific Leviticus? Huh? What, what's the Leviticus one? You said twenty-five. Leviticus 13, twenty-five. Right? No, Leviticus twenty-five, forty-four through forty-six is where God told the Israelites they can they can own non-Israelites as slaves for life. Twenty-five. You said twenty-five to what? Forty-four through forty-six. Okay. And this is why Exodus twenty-one sixteen isn't about slavery, sir. It's about kidnapping. I, I, we can agree to disagree on that. Like genuine. every every mainstream biblical scholar will tell you that Exodus twenty one sixteen is referring to not kidnapping your fellow Hebrew, a free man, a free person. Don't go and kidnap your neighbors. Not nothing to do with slavery. Sure, it doesn't. And I have modern scholars that contradict that. And, and also, I, if, I, if you're going to say God's, if you're if you're going to say Exodus twenty one sixteen, God says don't kidnap. Well, how about in Numbers thirty one seventeen through eighteen when God commands His soldiers to go and kidnap young virgin girls? So the reason why actually, so I'm looking at the Leviticus, right? So yeah, you, don't you remember talk about how that. I mentioned about the whole civil law situation, right? That there is like the Old Testament law is broken down into ceremonial, uh, civil law, and then moral law, right? If it's civil, like, you know, in this specific context, if it's not illegal for you to purchase somebody you can that that's effectively what this is saying yes yeah, like god, that's said, what I was god supports out god supports his chosen people the israelites owning foreigners as they're, they're not for chosen life. brother the israelites are not god's chosen people no because uh the apostle paul writes that neither jew nor greek um, like we, we we are all created equal in the okay, eyes. Okay, well, whatever, whatever. In God told God told the Israelites that they are allowed to own foreigners as slaves for life. Yeah, and the, like okay. I would say that that's morally wrong. God say that. What? Wait. So you disagree? So you disagree with God? Wrong. You disagree? No, with no, God? no. I would say that a Jew purchasing someone and putting them forever in debt into their ser house service is kind of actually just morally corrupt and wrong that's what god says you're allowed to do no 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 it's, read it's it. literally read it. talking about civil let me, I, let me if, read it okay if you can buy someone that means it's not illegal to purchase them let me let me right. read this. Let me read it. Okay, I want you to tell me if this is if you think this is morally permissible because this is this is what God thinks is morally permissible. Okay, you may buy men and women slaves from the nations around you. Also, you may buy children as slaves. These children, yeah, buy these children, 
These children must come from the families of foreigners living in your land. These child slaves will belong to you. You may even pass these foreign slaves onto your children. After you die, you can make them slaves forever. But you must not rule cruelly over your own brothers, the Israelites. Is that morally permissible to own why, someone? Why, as why do you think in the text it's referring to the slaves as brothers? No. Out of curiosity. That it, your own fellow Israelites is your brother, not the foreigner. No, no, no. I'm saying like the the context of it is definitely that they could purchase people, right? Can we agree that the Israelites were given permission to God that he could that they could go out and buy? Yes, people, right? yes. God supports slavery. Yeah. No, 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 no. And then no. You look at Exodus. You just, and then sir. You just said, kidnapped. sir. Kidnapping. You just said. You just said that God gave the Israelites permission to go and get non non Israelites and own them as slaves. Yeah, and okay, so God supports slavery. <laughs> then why why does someone who gets caught kidnapping someone and selling them into slavery why do they get the death penalty? Then? It does it because because, well, because because that that is about your fellow Hebrew. I've, I've been trying to explain this to you, but you said you wanted to agree to disagree. It, if we want to, if we want to grant you, pointing out to if we you, want to, preacher, if we want to grant that to you that that is about slavery, then we have a contradiction. It's not, it, it literally isn't a contradiction. Okay, stop, because stop, purchasing stop, stop. Versus please stop. Is two please different stop. Things. I'm going to ask you this one more time, and if you don't answer me honestly, I'm going to move on to the next guest. Okay, one you verse. What, one good. verse. One, no, hold on, sir. Don't don't leave yet, please. Okay, the question I was going to ask him, and I've asked him, I think I asked him this twice, and he told me, no, it's not a contradiction. One verse says, God says slavery is not allowed. Another verse says, God says slavery is allowed. Is that a contradiction? He said no. I was going to ask him that again, and if he, if he said no, I was going to kick him out because he's just not being honest. But Exodus 21.16 is not about slavery. Even, even if we were to grant you that Exodus 21.16 is about slavery, then we have a contradiction. Because if Exodus 21.16 is God saying no slavery allowed, well then in Leviticus 25.44, God says slavery is allowed. So if we want to grant that Exodus 21.16 is about slavery, then we have a contradiction here. Right? I don't think it's good for you on your end as a Christian. I don't think it's good for you Christians to try to twist Exodus 21.16 into being about slavery. Because if you do t try to twist that into being about slavery, well, then we have a contradiction in your book. So it's better to just read Exodus 21.16 for what it is. It's about kidnapping, right? It's not about slavery. It's about kidnapping a free person. Someone who is living among you freely, your fellow Hebrew, or maybe even a foreigner who's living among you freely. Exodus 21.16 is not about slavery. And I'm pretty sure every mainstream biblical scholar will tell you that Exodus 21.16 is not about slavery. It's about kidnapping, right? But if we want to grant you, fine, it's about slavery, well, then we have a contradiction. So don't do that, Christians. That's a, that's a, that's a bad move. Don't try to twist Exodus 21.16 into being about slavery. That's a bad move. Because then it just leads to a contradiction. Keep spamming those likes, guys. I really appreciate you. Make sure you follow me on here, guys, if you're not following me already. And uh, follow my backup accounts. They're all linked in my bio. Just follow my backup accounts. And subscribe to my YouTube, guys, if you want to watch the full live streams. I post all my full live streams on my YouTube. Excuse me. <laughs> tap tap everyone thank you thank you nico for the taps hello yes my friend hello how you doing oops sorry i got a, a little message on my phone there how's it going i'm good thank you how are you lovely good what you got for us uh you said there was contradictions in the bible uh, yeah, but I was I was specifically referring to where if you try to say that Exodus twenty one sixteen is about slavery, well then yeah we would that would point to a contradiction. Yes, Exodus twenty one sixteen is not about slavery. I agree. I agree with you. The last yeah. guest, the last guest was saying that it was. What well, is not? It's about something much more important. Right. So, are you a Christian? Yes. Okay. What would you like to talk about? What, like, you want to address the topics here? Well, we were talking about Exodus twenty one sixteen. Okay, what do you want to talk about? 
Well, it's not about uh, slavery. Yeah, it's, it's, about, about, it's about kidnapping. Uh, yes, which is completely acceptable under the correct circumstances. Yeah, I, I, like God does think kidnapping is acceptable because in, in Deuteronomy 21, 10 through 14, God says if you see a beautiful woman in the time of war, you can kidnap her, capture her, and take her to your house and, and grape her after, after she mourns for her parents for one month. Yes, and you think there is something wrong with this? Yes, I do. Well, explain yourself, young man. All right, I'm pretty sure this guy's a troll. You're pretty... <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think he was a troll. It's okay, though. I, I enjoy trolls. Oh, Jesus, God, Daddy. Oh, Lord, come in me. Let's bring Nico up here for a second. Lord, come all over me. Hey, man, how hey. you doing? Hey, what's up, Nico? Hey, I just wanted to really briefly give uh, a quick, um, like, a side explanation for... Exodus 2116, for those that do want to say that it is about slavery, I agree that the whole point of the verse is about kidnapping. Um, but when it does talk about, like, whether that person is with them or sold, we could say that that person was sold into, what, slavery. Um, the, pro the problem, though, is for the people that want to say this is about slavery and God saying this is saying that slavery isn't okay – this very clearly is showing that God is, or how God is regulating slavery. And the example I like to use is just like I cannot go out and steal a car, but I can go and buy and own one legally. Right. God is regulating how you are to do things in his so quote-unquote godly pure nation. So he is saying you cannot just grab someone off the street. You must go and purchase them and then you can legally own them because whatever happened to them how they how they got there that's irrelevant you right. are quote unquote innocent because you are just going through the proper channels um and so for those that like to say oh exodus twenty one sixteen is god being anti-slavery it's no god is just regulating that to show you how you can obtain slaves right and, don't don't um, go and kidnap them go and buy them legally yeah, yeah, unless they are prisoners of war, but that we, we don't see that in Leviticus 25. We yeah, we see that see in uh, Deuteronomy 20, I believe, where you can go and you can make uh, four slaves of yep. cities that would rather surrender to you than be annihilated. Because, you know, yeah, what a wonderful uh, Deuteronomy, choice. That's Deuteronomy um, 20, 10 through 15, I think. Yeah, yeah. But I just wanted to um, say that as well because there's lots of people that say that's anti-slavery, but it clearly. Yeah, I know, and, and that's that's I don't understand why Christians would do that because if if they if because even if we were to grant them that that's anti-slavery, well then that just opens up a contradiction. Yeah, yeah, and then you run into that guy who's like, no, no, yeah. God, God can say no slaves here and slaves here, and that's not a contradiction. and that's not a contradiction. Yeah, <laughs> that's, yeah. That's, that's wild. But yeah, uh, thanks for letting me up to explain that. Thanks, um, Nico. Thanks I, I for coming in. To our life. Take care. Thanks, man. Thank you for coming in and add, adding some input and some clarification on that. I really appreciate your input there. Thank you. All right, guys. Let's get some guest requests in here, guys. Please keep ta uh, tapping those likes, everybody. Please follow me right here. Follow. Click that little plus button and um, subscribe and uh, follow me. On, subscribe to my YouTube, guys. Please go subscribe to my YouTube. I'm trying to hit 600 subscribers on there. Um, please send a guest request if you are a Christian and you disagree that God supports slavery, murder, and rape. Please only send a guest request if you are a Christian and you disagree that the God the, the Bible, Christianity supports slavery, murder, and rape. And you got to be 18 plus, guys. You got to be 18 plus. Kind of a, hello? Make it quiet. Charles? Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Uh, uh, can you can you turn the TV off or whatever that is in the background? Yeah, just did it. I just took care of that. Okay. okay. Uh, man, you, you, your heading on your live here is, you know, about Christianity, but all your arguments are, you know, before Christianity even became a thing, you're arguing from a, the Jewish law. Um, I'm, ta I'm taking it from the Christian Bible. Well, uh, I think you'll find that, you know, the Old Testament has a lot to do with Judaism, not Christianity. It didn't exist then. It's your God, um, though. It's your God. Well, um, I think the argument could be religion 
agrees with slavery, not no, God. Your, your I think God if you look does. at other God. religion, your, your, and most your God every is. God, if you, get into, if you get into reading other religions, you'll find that even today, religion. I don't want to talk about... you call it Allah... I only want to you talk know, about your. I only I want to think, talk about your religion, your God. I don't want to talk about other religions or other gods. I want to. I want to talk about your God, and okay, your religion. All right. But you're citing Judaism and their God. No, this is this you is your God. This is your. This is about you. a time when Christianity did not exist. This is your God as but well. You're sir. using Christ. Well, well, I, I, I'm not. I'm not saying that's not true. I'm just saying your your po your right, your so, caption on your lies. So would you like to kind of demonizing Christianity and yes. arguing about something that existed before Christianity existed? Is Jesus God? Your, your mar arguing point. No, but no? he is to some people. So uh, uh, do, you, do you worship? What you are. Do you worship Jesus? No. So you're not so a Christian. So why is that the why is that the, uh, you don't worship Jesus? You believe Jesus is the Son of God. You don't worship Jesus. You worship God. That's okay. why my point is you're you're are you isolating this on Christ? Are you a Christian? And Christ, uh, you know, yes, I'm a Christian. Okay, but why, you're arguing. But you're, there's you're, a, you know, sir, there's like a there's Christ like a. Up here on your, I apologize. There's like a three to four second delay between us. That's why we keep trying to talk past each other. So just I'm going to drop you out and then send another guest request. Okay. Send another guest request. Maybe that'll fix it because there's like a four second delay between us. And that's why every time one of us would start talking, the other one would start talking too. So I could hear myself echoing in your background. So um, if you want to send another guest request, maybe that'll fix it. Thank God you let me back up in here, my brother. I <laughs> miss you. <laughs> All right, let's try Charles again. Charles. Yeah, I'm here. Okay. So yeah, this is this is your God. Okay. So do, let's let's start with the first one, slavery. Do you do you agree or disagree that God supports slavery? I believe man at a certain point was ignorant enough to believe slavery um to it it depends what you're calling slavery um if you're if you're talking about prisoners who were guilty of murder and were forced to work for the family because they murdered the father of two children and a wife uh yeah i don't see any reason why uh you know, I'm that, talking that's, about that's slavery, but it's it's. I'm it's talking about in um, I'm talking about in Leviticus 25 when God told the Israelites that they're allowed to own non-Israelites as slaves for life. Well, I think it needs to be broke down a little further than that. I don't think He meant just go out and grab anybody. Would you, would you like me to read it to you? I mean, you can. I mean, I'm sure there's more in Leviticus than that. And again, like I said, I, I just don't understand why you're you've got Christ with devil horns. Sir, and sir, please, stop. please stop crying. Please stop crying. Okay, we're not. not it, who cares? We're we're talking about your God. Okay, it doesn't matter if it's if it's Old Testament, New Testament. It's your Bible. It's your book. It's your God. Okay. So stop crying about why do you have Christ up there? I don't care, okay? Let me read Leviticus 25, 44 through 46 to you. Christ. Uh, okay, we I don't, don't care. Christ, that's, though. That's, irrevel that's irrelevant to well, me, sir. I mean, your Please. argument is pointless. Please. You're demonizing that one individual. Please, please stop. You're please demonizing stop crying. Christ to make your point about God. Please stop crying, please. Would you like uh, okay. me to read? If you Would you like call me? It crying. Or, or com please stop complaining. Please. Read to me what Christ said. Read to me what Christ said about the slaves. Okay. I don't. If, I don't want to. If if Christ is not your God, I don't want to talk about Christ. Okay. I want to talk about what your God. Christ says. is not Christianity's God, man. Yeah, yeah but you Christ said is not you said worship. you said Christ is not your God. So I don't want to talk about what Christ says. I want to talk about what your God says. Well, my God told the Jewish people. Yes, your God Jewish supports text, slavery. Your God supports. Yes, your God supports slavery. Yes. All, all God 
gods of every religion supported it. Man, I don't, I don't want to talk about one other one gods. Time. I don't want to talk about other gods. I want to talk about your God, okay? Let me read to you where your God says that slavery is morally permissible, okay? Let me read it for the people maybe who are watching and maybe well, they don't. If I was a Christian, if I were a Christian who spoke Islam, my word for God would be Allah. I, I think this guy's. Been, I think this guy's been drinking or something. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not sure what's going on with him. Oh, that was frustrating. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, but that was frustrating. I do want to cook. Hello, Quan. White. Uh, I didn't even know I requested up. Hi. Oh. I'm ordering a poke oh. bowl. Wish me good lunch. <laughs> good luck. Good luck. All right, I don't have any guest requests. I I'm sorry, that, that last dude was just incredibly frustrating. I don't, I, I, there was still like a bit of a, de a delay between us too. That's what makes it hard to talk like that. Good luck, Juan. Hello. Hello, how are you doing? Are you Christian? Yes, sir, I am. Okay, what would you like to talk about? Well, I, I don't think Jesus ever supported uh, murder and well, the stuff you have up there. Is Jesus um, is Jesus God? Uh, he's he's not the creator. If that's what I, you're saying. I I just want to talk about your God. So is Jesus your God? Well, I believe that the God of Israel, the the God of the Old Testament, is a Lucifer, because that's what the Bible says. So in Genesis 1, 1, do you know what Genesis 1, 1 says? It says, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. When it says God there, you, you, that's Lucifer? No. It, 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 you see, it talks about the watchers uh, before the time of the flood. They were in charge of the earth. God put, put them in charge, and then after he uh, cleansed them off of the earth, he replaced them with uh, Lucifer. Wait, right did, you say, for the did, did you say that Lucifer is the God of the Bible? Yes, that's what I believe. Even the New Testament? No, no. The, uh, well, yes, but Jesus. We're waiting for the coming of Jesus. That's the that's the God. So, so, Lu so, it, so Lucifer. So Genesis one one. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. You're telling me yes. Lucifer? You're telling me Lucifer created that's the heavens it. and the earth? That's the creator. The creator that created Lucifer. That created the Watchers. That created Jesus. I, I don't. I, I feel like th you're just making stuff up. I mean, I don't. I don't no, know. No, it's on the Bible. Okay, like because he's so so. Who's your god? Like what? So who is your god? The way I get connected to the creator, the creator of all the universes, all so, the other lives, and all the other planets is, is the Jesus. creator. Is the creator God? The creator is not the god of the Old Testament, but he is the creator of the Genesis, the creator of Earth, life, everything. Creator of of the Watchers, Lucifer, the Jesus, Watchers. Father. Watchers? What are you yes. talking about? Uh, the, watchers, the Watchers are the ones that were in charge of the earth uh, before the flood. They taught mankind what, what verse is witchcraft, this? astronomy. What I verse, have to what look verse? it up. Uh, give, would you give me a chance to look it up? Yeah, sure. Uh, this is uh, uh, this is crazy. <clears throat> Does anyone have a, a clue what this guy is talking about? I don't think this is like a your typical average Christian. I think this is um, a Christian who's like going on his own little fairy tale in the Bible. Okay, it's in Daniel four seven, and I'm not insulting you, man. I'm just giving you an opinion. Uh, like I didn't insult you. I didn't insult you. Okay, it's on Daniel four. Uh, Daniel what? Four seventeen. Daniel four seventeen. And what is this going to show me? Uh, it talks about the watchers. Uh, for this has been de for this has been decreed by the messengers. It is commanded by the holy ones, so that everyone may know that the Most High rules over the kingdoms of the world. He gives them to anyone he chooses, even to the lowliest of people. I'm not sure what what you're trying to. Sh I'm not sure what you're trying to show me here. It's because in well, in another Bible it will say in the degree of, in the degree of the watchers. And who are the watchers? 
They're the ones that created the Nephilim, the giants, the the ones that taught mankind witchcraft, witchcraft and astronomy. The and reason, so you, the whole, so you worship the, you you are the Watchers your god? Are the, are, like are those your gods? Those were gods of the earth at that time. So who who is your god? I want to talk about your god. My god is Jesus Christ right now. But you said Jesus wasn't God. Jesus is my connection to the Creator, the Alpha and Omega, the God of all gods. There's a bunch of gods, man. A bunch of gods. So you, how many gods There's do you worship? How many, go you. how many gods do you have? I'm telling you, I, <laughs> I worship. I follow the teachings of Christ. He He is my connection. You follow the to teachings the of Alpha Christ. So, like, oh, so Christ. you follow the teachings of Christ. So, so do you have children? Yes, I do. Okay, Jesus says that in order to follow him, you must hate your children. Do you do you hate your children? Yeah, he says that. What verse? What verse did he say that? Luke, Luke fourteen twenty six. You mind if I look it up? Yeah, go ahead. A, a large crowd was following oh, yeah. Jesus. He turned around and said to them, "If you want to be my disciple, you must hate everyone else—your father and your mother, your wife and your children, brothers and sisters. Yes, even hate your own life. Otherwise, you cannot be my disciple." So unless you're unless you're willing to hate unless you're willing to hate your family and hate your wife and hate your children you're not worthy of being a follower of Christ. Luke what? What was it again? Luke 14:26. So you follow the teachings of Christ. I'm just curious if you actually hate your kids. <laughs> because if you don't hate your kids, Jesus doesn't think you're worthy of him. He's a like a cult leader, you know. Hate hate your kids. Uh, hate your family. Come follow me and, and come drink my blood. <sighs> okay. He's talking about, like, say, let's say your son becomes a, a mass murderer, a, a serial, a serial uh, unaliver. You you can't love what he does. You you got, you it's not what it says. Goal, man. You it's not what it says. It says. It says you're not. If you don't hate your family, you're not worthy of following me. So, are, so do you hate your kids? No, I don't hate my kids. Well, then you're not worthy of following Christ. Christ doesn't want you. He don't want you. To, he don't want oh, you. Then, you're not worthy. You're not worthy to him. Uh, then I. Well, then you I'm can. Not worthy of you can follow Jesus, but you got to hate your family and you got to hate yourself and hate your kids. Uh, I, I choose the person. This is the cost. This is the cost of of following Jesus. This is the cost of being his disciple. You got If you want to follow this cult and lead and follow this cult guy around, you got to hate your kids. So, okay. So you're assuming that I would go by the logic of the Bible, right? I'm assuming that you would go by the logic of the Bible, right? It, so, what does that mean? Yeah, what the word of the that you're you're going you're saying that because it's in the bible that i should obey it right that's what you're saying well shouldn't you As obey you, you said that Christian, you right? said you said you follow jesus's teachings okay so in the bible it also says that if you want it, you have to do things out of with two or more witnesses that means that you have to have two or more verses to back up your claim what so you don't trust jesus when he says that you don't trust jesus's words I don't, I don't trust the Catholic Church that created the Bible. There's there's bits and, and pieces in so, there that... So the Bible's, the Bible's not reliable? To a certain point. You gotta so the Bible... You gotta, you gotta look a little outside the box. Uh, the, the problem with religion, and this is religion, okay? Religion puts you in a box where you can't go outside of that box. And that's wait, how, wait, that's wait, how wait. Stuff wait, sir, sir, is the Bible... Is the Bible reliable so, or not? Again, I'm you're, trying to get there. You're losing. You're losing your connection. Okay, I'm trying to get there. You got to go outside of the box. That's why I'm not in a religion. I just I'm need a. a I just need you to answer it directly. So, Is the so, Bible reliable so or not? Please, please answer box. it directly. So you got to go off of the Dead Sea Squirrels. You got to go off of the history. The Dead Sea you Squirrels. <laughs> you said the Dead, Dead Sea Squirrels. Dead sea squirrel. You know Dead what I meant, sea. right? Dead Sea Squirrels. Yeah, yeah I know. No, I know what you. Laugh. I know what you mean. Get the giggles. I know what you mean. You know what I meant. Um, I, I just like you to answer it directly. Um, is the Bible reliable or not? 
Not 100%, to be honest. Not okay, 100% if the, because it was created by man. Okay, if the Bible is not reliable and it's created by man, then how do you know that Jesus rose from the dead? That's why you got to look at outside of the box. How do you, how you, do you, you know that Jesus, at, how do you know Jesus rose from the dead? Tell me. Well, there's historical documents from uh, Italian people that were there. There's historical documents from Muslims. Can you give uh, me a per like? Can you can you show like? Can you tell me something I can look up that would that would talk about Jesus rising from the dead? Man, that's going way back. It's because a lot of this stuff you learn in college when you study the theology and religions and stuff like that around the world, and you start noticing like they give you information. And like, man, I would have to go back. I haven't been back in college for like. Where can I years. um? Where can I find, where can I read or find out about Jesus rising from the dead outside of the Bible? Because we can't use the Bible, well, right? Because the Bible is unreliable. It was written by man. So we can't use so the Bible. So there's books from India talking about a man performing miracles like Jesus did around the time of Jesus. From then, there's how do, also... How do I look uh, that up? There's, there's, there's also a book in a monastery over there in Tibet or... Have you read Buddhist it? Buddhist have you, have you read it? The art in, in when you're in uh, at the University of El Paso, Texas, they go by what the archaeologists, the people that actually go over there. Because you and me, dude, we just sit on our butts in so front of our phone and get our. What did you Google. read? Um, where, where else? Guys, where where else have you read, sir? Sir, where well, where else? So they got the, capital. So they capital. Got a, so just, capital. I'm trying to get capital. to you. Okay. Where okay. else? Where else have you read about Jesus resur resurrecting from the dead outside of the Bible? Where have you personally read it? Okay. Well, these archaeologists say that the Buddhist monastery have... No, where, where have Jesus. you personally read it? Where have you personally read about Jesus what, rising from the dead? Place, the, the same place you personally read it. Wh where? Me and you are the same, buddy. We're just sitting our butts on the couch judging people. That's all we do. Wait, There's capital. Archaeologists not really go out and do this, man. You gotta, you gotta go what out did the you world read? the world, man. What was it that you read that talked about Jesus rising from the dead outside of the Bible? I'm just going by what the archaeologists at UTEP said, man, at college so, in the university. So you, so the, so the only thing that you've ever read about Jesus rising from the dead was the Bible. Just, just the, just the reports and the, the reports that these archaeologists made about Jesus and the Bibles and theology. And what archaeologists? Religion. What archaeologists talk about Jesus rising from the dead? Like I said, dude, it's been 15 years. I can't cite you every source because it's been a long time. I'm just curious, what have you read yourself personally? What did you read that talked about Jesus rising from the dead other than the Bible? Just, just their papers, man. Their papers and I have to go off of what these archaeologists say. Okay. It's, right. it's, like, it's, it's like me asking you, can you prove to me what happens after death? No, I, I don't know. I don't know if anything happens after death. None of us do. None of us do. So that's why I don't knock you for being an atheist, because that's your belief. It's your religion. Atheism isn't and, a belief system. <laughs> you have to believe in something because you I can't believe prove in. It. I believe in facts. The facts are proven. Can you prove what happens after death? No. Because I, I don't love to hear that. I don't. You could I don't change the world. I don't claim to know. That. I don't you claim make to every Christian become an atheist. I don't claim to know what happens after death. Of course not. Nobody can. Yeah. Nobody so can. I don't, I just atheism, I atheism isn't a religion or a belief system. Atheism is the lack of a belief in gods. What do you think happens when you die, man? I have no clue. No clue. No idea no clue. whatsoever. No, neither do you. No, no, I don't. But I gotta yeah. believe in something. I gotta. I, I, believe, gotta I believe in facts. In I believe in facts. I, I don't know. What, I, facts. Okay, let's let's go to facts. Uh, yeah. theor, uh, theoretical physics says that that energy cannot be made or destroyed. So I'm made of energy. There's energy coursing through my brain. That's the difference in a, between in a, a closed a, in a, a closed system. It, in a clo in a closed system. It's a uh, it's energy. Yeah. So the energy that's in me that is my consciousness it exists even after I die. It has prove, to keep on, that. by the laws of Pro science, by the no. laws of science, the energy in my brain has to keep on existing. See, but so, so earlier you said you don't know what happens after you die. And now you're saying you do know what no, happens after I you don't, die. But no, you said, you said you want science. I, I'm giving you science. The scientists. No, I didn't say, say I, I didn't say I want, I didn't say I want science. I said, I believe in facts. That's a fact. What, that's what's a fact? 
What's a fact? That energy, energy cannot be made or destroyed. Okay, what's your point? That whatever energy is keeping this body moving is going to stay alive. This consciousness, this thing that's thinking and gathering memories. Energy, this con that's consciousness is not energy. What is it? Well, nobody knows what consciousness what's the difference is. Between, what's the difference between you and a consciousness, consciousness? Consciousness is just your subjective experience of reality. That's all it is. It's not, it's not an energy. That sounds like a metaphor. What is the difference between you and a corpse? Like, what do you mean, morally, or like, what, I don't, what do you mean? Morally, no, when no. You, when you say, when you say difference, why, why, why isn't that, why isn't that corpse up, up and talking to you and run, and walking around? Why doesn't it talk to you? Why doesn't because, it think? Because it's, why it doesn't have, because it doesn't have any, it doesn't have any brain activity. What is brain activity? What does that mean? Because because I can hold a brain in what? my hand. Doesn't I don't even know what I don't even know what you're trying to. I don't. What are the, what are these questions, sir? You I don't know. Man, you do. You know. You know. I Come don't on. know what you're talking about. <laughs> I have not. I don't I have this entire conversation. I have literally not understood one thing that you've talked you've talked about here today. From because from the watchers, from the watchers in the Bible to the Bible. like, uh, like Lucifer is God of the Bible, and like if you the, don't understand the Bible, you can't talk about the Bible. Well, you said that's in the well, Bible. you said the Bible isn't reliable. Well, you want to talk about the Bible? I I told you about science. I told you about the Bible. I'm trying to get you in every corner, but why you're should like, I? Why okay, should I care okay, what the Bible says okay, if it's not reliable? Not okay, let's not use this. So, so what? Do you, what is it you believe, man? I believe you in believe facts. And I believe what's in the fact. fact of, uh, what's the fact of what happens when you fact. when you're on the? Oh, I, I don't know what happens when we die. I have no clue. Exactly. It's just I a belief. I don't know what you're. What the? What are you? What do you mean exactly? What are you talking about? <laughs> exactly what you're talking about this is what this this is what just happened okay you said what do you believe in i said i believe in facts oh well, what happens when you die oh i have no clue exactly exactly what okay what? i don't have clue either i don't have a clue either but i have my belief all right have a good day <laughs> i'm sorry that was funny that was a funny conversation he was a cool guy he was a cool guy but that was wild thank you otter What's up, Otter? Thank you. <laughs> that was funny. <laughs> He'd be a cool dude to sit down and chill with, have a beer with. The Watchers. Keep tapping those likes, everybody. Thank you. Hello? Jorge? Drummer dude, Jorge, drummer dude. Are you there? I can hear you. I can hear you, drummer dude. Oh, pff. you you waited right till I want to click the disconnect button. You waited right till I to talk. You should have talked sooner. Sorry, or send another guest request if you want to. Hello, Reese. Yo. How you doing? Good, how are you? I'm good, thank you. How old are you? Uh, 19. Okay, what's up, man? Alright, so I just, I was just scrolling and I saw this. Are, uh, you, are you a Christian? Yeah. Okay. What do you want to talk uh, about? I just wanted to know, like, what are your thoughts, like, what makes you believe what you believe? Like, are you an atheist or are you? Yeah, I'm, I'm an atheist. Yeah, I don't, I'm, I'm not convinced um, any gods ex exist. But e even if you were to prove that your God is real, I would say, OK, fine, your God's real. But I would never worship your God. I, don't, I, you're, I think that if your God is real, that um, your God is a violent, bloodthirsty psychopath. What would make you think that? Um, he supports slavery, he supports murder, and he supports rape. He supports uh, infanticide, genocide, um, all kinds of things. Have, uh, have you seen the Ten, Command the Ten Commandments? Yeah. Do you know what one of them is? Thou shalt not murder. Yeah. So if he's telling us to not murder, then uh, how, how is that him supporting it? Because in 1 Samuel 15, 3, God commanded King Saul to go and murder all the Amalekites and all of their women and pregnant women and their babies. 
Do you know why that was? Because like God's Im- because God's immoral. Uh, I don't know if it's immoral. Have you ever read the entire book? Yeah, I've read the, I've read it. Yeah, I've read it. So what happens before that? What do the Malachites do? Um, I think that the Israelites were trying to travel like into their land, and the Amalekites stopped them, and so God sent King Saul to go and um, kill all their babies and, and pregnant women and, and men. So, the Israelites. But more importantly, what do the babies do? That's my biggest issue. Hold on. Let me pull this up real quick. If you kill a baby, is that murder? Yes, it's murder. Yeah, so God supports murder. He does not support murder. It's God told murder. God told people what to you, go what kill. Did you say that was that First Samuel? First Samuel fifteen three. God told people to go kill babies, and you said killing babies is murder. So therefore, God supports murder. First Samuel. First Samuel what? Fifteen three. All right. Let me flip like three pages. What'd you say? So I gotta flip like three pages and then get to oh, okay. it. Okay. All right. Do you find it? Yep. Okay. That's just one example of murder. There's other ones, but that's probably the most um, common one. Like Leviticus 2013, or I mean uh, Exodus 2013, God commands that gay people be murdered. Um, your God flooded the world and drowned every baby and pregnant women and man on earth except for Noah. Have you have you found it, sir? What are you doing? Yeah, I'm reading it. Read it out loud for us so people can hear it. All right. All right. Cool. It says... I have decided to settle accounts of the nation of Amalek for opposing Israel when they came from Egypt. Now go and completely destroy the entire Amalekite nation, men, women, children, babies, cattle, sheep, goats, camels, and donkeys. So it says. That was that was the, that good or bad when God commanded the Amalekite babies the, to be killed? The Israelites are God's people. You know that, right? Yeah, they're God's chosen people. Yeah, but was that good or bad when God when God said to go kill Amalekite babies? Well, Amalek opposed Israel. And, and so well, yeah, they, they tried to travel enemies. into their land. They tried to move into their land. Exactly. So they made themselves enemies of God, enemies of the they're just def- they're just defending their land, sir. The, Amal- the Amalekites were just there in their land, and the Israelites moved, tried to move in, and the Amalekites stopped them. And God said, "Well, you know what? Go kill their babies." Was that good or bad when God commanded the babies to be murdered? Well, what did the, don- the donkey do? <laughs> what did the donkey do? His judgment. I don't know his. I don't know why, but it's everything that they deserve comes to him. I mean, you like the babies, sir. Like, come on. Same thing happened whenever. So was it good? So. I've asked you this. I don't think I got a direct answer. Was it good or bad when God commanded the babies to be killed? If it was good or bad? Yeah, was it good or bad? Well, he did it for a reason. For So for his judgment, it was probably a good thing to do. Okay, and do you agree with God? In this, in this sense, like in this story? Do you, do you always agree with God? Like... Let me ask you, are, like, is every command that God gives, is, is, is every command good and righteous? Uh, I would say so, yeah. Okay, so you think it was good and righteous to, when God commanded babies to be killed? Oh, I'm reading before it, and it's saying... Can you answer that question? If it was for... If God demanded it, then it happened for a reason. I mean... So it was good? His judgment is better than our judgment. So, so I would say whatever he did, he did it for a reason. So it was good? I would say so. Are you against abortion? 
Yes. Is it wrong to kill? Uh, uh, <laughs> so you're so you're against a, uh, an abortion, but you're you're totally fine with God killing newborn babies. It's very very pro life of you, sir. Have you read the two uh, stories after that? Just legit on the same page. <clears throat> Have you read what happened after that? Because I just got done reading it. It cancels out God killing babies, or what? Do you have like your Bible by you or no? Yeah, I don't have a physical Bible, but I have Bible Gateway on my laptop here. I don't. So does it just, does it cancel out when God killed babies? Does it justify God killing babies? Legit. Right after, so he was commanded to kill all the Am Amalek people, and then on the same page, it's where. The Lord rejects Saul. Okay, and God, God still, God still Lord. sent him to go and kill babies. And then Saul pleads for forgiveness. The reason, yeah, the reason died. God, I think the reason God rejected Saul is because he didn't kill every single one of them. That's why God rejected him. Because I think Saul brought back a few people or something. He didn't actually, he didn't actually utterly destroy them the way God commanded Saul to do it. So that's why he rejected Saul because yeah. Saul, but. <clears throat> But yeah, that's kind of like nothing to do. It has nothing to do with what we're talking about here. We're talking about God supporting murder. Because you said killing babies is murder, and you said abortion's wrong, so you're pro-life. So, and you said every 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 command from God is good and righteous, right? So, like, if God um, if God were like to reveal Himself to you in a way that you were absolutely certain that it was Him, and commanded you to go to your neighbor's house and kill their babies because He has good reasons for it, would you do it? I don't think God would ever send me somewhere to go kill somebody's babies. But but he's already done it right here. He's capable of making that command. Like, he sent King Saul into the neighboring Amalekites to go kill their babies because they were his enemies. So if God revealed himself to you and sent you over to your neighbor's house to kill their babies because they're his enemies, would you follow that command from God? And remember, remember it's a good and righteous command, too, because you said every command from God is good and righteous. So are you going to disobey a good and righteous command from God? He left. <laughs> Keep tapping the screen, everybody. I really appreciate you guys being here. Thank you for hanging out with me. Thank you for watching. Click the follow button, everybody. And so make sure you subscribe to my YouTube if you want to watch the full live streams. I post all my full live streams on there. So if you were a guest on here today and if you were in the comments here today, say hello to YouTube and go subscribe to YouTube and um, watch the full live streams. <clears throat> hello, Chris. Yeah, hello. Hello, how are you doing? Doing great. What about you? I'm good too, thank you. Okay, awesome. Are you so, a Christian? I am a Christian. Okay. What would you like to talk? What would you like to talk about? Alright, uh, so uh the caller that just left, uh, I think you were asking him some few questions and uh, I think he was, uh, I mean, he knew what he was talking about, but I think he was having a lot of trouble. And I feel like I have a, a lot of comments, you know, to answer some of the questions that you were asking him. Okay. So, uh, you were asking him about um, God's righteousness. Uh, let's say the fact that he uh, got ordered in the Bible for him to go and murder a group of people, let's say like uh, when Pharaoh was drowned uh, in the sea, in the Red Sea, uh, that was the command of God, a whole lot of things that God did that killed a lot of people, including children. And uh, you were asking, was that righteous or is that murder or something like that, right? I asked him if every command that God gives is good and righteous and he said yes. Yes, I, w I would also say yes, uh, and it's yes because he is God. And if we as humans will have the moral right to question whether what God does is right or, or not, that means he is not God. So you would never question God? I would never question God. See, that's a, very that's a very scary statement. When I hear Christians say that, it scares me because... It shouldn't it scare you because... Well, 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 I'm going to ask you what I asked him, okay? I'm going to ask okay. you to see... If God revealed, and remember, you would never question God, and every, and every command from God is good and righteous. Mm -hmm. You would never question Him. So if God revealed Himself to you in a way that you were absolutely certain that it was God, 
and commanded, gave you a good and righteous command mm -hmm. to go to your neighbor's house and kill their babies, would you, would you follow that command? Okay, here's my answer to that. So, from the time of Genesis up until now, there has been uh, a whole lot of like evolution. Things has evolved so much from that point. Why am I saying this? Because there, there came a time before Jesus, he sent his son Jesus to come and die on the cross where uh, Christians, the same people who were followers of God back then, Sir? I wouldn't call them Christians because by that time, Sir? Christ had not come. Excuse Sorry. me, I'm answering your question, so let me... You're not, you're not answering my questions. You're preaching no. about Jesus. No, I, asked I, you, I asked you if God revealed himself to you in a way that you were absolutely certain and I'm gave you a and gave you a good and righteous command to go to your neighbor's house and kill their babies. Would you follow that command? I'm, I'm building up a point. So Just answer it directly, please. Yeah, let me, I'm answering it uh, the way that I will be able to, you know, give you... A I, would, I would appreciate, respectfully, I would appreciate if you answered it directly instead of preaching about Jesus. Okay, do you want me to answer your question or you don't want me? I would to? love for you, you to answer my question directly, okay, please. So can you let me answer it, please? Yes, answer it. I'm going to give you about 10 seconds to answer it because it's a yes or no question. Uh, uh, I mean, it's not a yes or no question like you're, you're talking about. So, so uh, it's, it's actually, yeah, it's, it's, it, it's really simple. Would you kill a baby? Would you go and kill a baby if God commanded you to? Yes or no? It's really well, simple. Well, 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 I kill a baby. I, as human, cannot kill a baby because I am not God, but God can. I asked you if God commanded you to go kill a baby, would you do I it? Am, yes or no? I am, I am human. I'm not going to kill a baby, <laughs> but God can. Because if God he, gave he you God. So if God if God gave you a good and righteous command to go and kill a baby, would you do it? Listen, let me answer the question. Don't give me 10 seconds. I'm on your channel, but don't The, the fact like, that oh, you have not the fact that you have not the fact that you have not immediately said no is scary. No, you, you, it's very you, scary. You are restraining you are restraining my my my, my you know uh my This my should be an easy no. This should be an no. easy no. I would no, I would not I, kill a baby. Let me let me answer your question because don't restrain the way I answer your questions because we have thoughts and we have reason reasoning. So if you if you if don't restrain my reasoning, okay, like let me explain your question to you. So you asked me this question and I'm telling you even in today's world, God will not do that. Why? Because um, that's the reason why I'm telling you that. Back from the time of Genesis, Chris, the world, because back Chris, then God will ask people to Chris, sacrifice animals. Chris, Chris, you cannot you cannot sit there and say that God would never command this because God very clearly has commanded this in the Bible before. He's demonstrated okay. that he is capable of making this command. In first Sam, in first Samuel fifteen three, God commanded King Saul to go to, to go kill babies. So you can't okay. sit there and say you can't sit there and say my God would never command that because yes, okay. he already I'm has giving, commanded. I'm giving you a background to why I'm saying that, but you are not allowing me. Can you allow me to also finish, please? I, I'm just shocked that you have not immediately said no. I would not kill a baby. Okay, let me give you a background to why I said God will not do that today. The reason why I'm saying God will not do that today is because God in the past, back in the day, where we all know in the time of Abraham and all that, God will use animals to sacrifice uh, in case someone sins to, to, you know, to compensate for their sins, right? But a time came where he's not doing that no more. In today's world, if someone sins, then guess what? He's not going to ask a, a person to go and sacrifice animals. Why? Because he did one thing that was able to cater for that sacrifice, which was to send his son Jesus Christ to come and die. So things have evolved up until that time. So back then when... <laughs> Thank God, will ask someone. Bro, you're sacrifice. just preaching. You're just preaching. Well, yes, but because. By oh my God! Why do they have to preach? Why can't they just say no? I would not kill a baby if God told me to. The fact that you couldn't just say no, sir. You just wanted to preach. You wouldn't say no. It's very scary when I hear Christians say, I would never question God. It's very scary when I hear you say that, I would never question God. And it's even more scary when I ask you if you would kill a baby if God told you to, and you wouldn't answer it. That's terrifying. Your neighbors are in danger because I believe that you would go and kill a baby if God commanded you to. And you can't sit there and say, well, my God would never command that. He would never command that. You can't possibly know that. You cannot say that God would never command it. He's already shown that he's capable of making those type of commands. In 1 Samuel 15, 3, God ordered that exact commandment to go and kill a baby. So for you to sit there and say, well, God would never do that. 
That's a lie, because God would do that. In fact, he has done that. And you can't possibly know that God would never command that. <sighs> Sorry. It's frustrating. Oh. Hello. That's me. Hello. Hello, Greg. How are you doing? Oh, I'm fine, thanks. Hey, listen, uh, I just have a small quibble. I am an atheist myself. I just want to, but let me just quickly say, um, I'm just impressed. You're very informed and brutal, but calm. Yeah, you just got a little <laughs> bit aggravated with this guy. But I, I try okay, to be. You know, I, I try to be calm. This. I appreciate the compliments, mm -hmm. man, but I, I try to be calm. Um, but yeah, yeah, sometimes it gets frustrating. Right. Just one little thing. Earlier you said uh, God killed, says to kill people that are gay. Um, I've just watched a lot of Dan McClellan. And he's kind of uh, made the point that sexuality was just not the same at that time. So I'm not sure you can actually say that God said to kill gay people. That's what the verse says. Exodus 20, 13 commands that if, if a man lies with a man as one does with a woman, he, have done, he, has yes. done a, he has committed a sin, they should be put to death. But I'm, I'm sure you're aware of Dan McClellan, yeah? Uh, yeah, I've heard of him. He's a, he's a Mormon, oh. isn't he? Well, he is, but, he, but he's very specific. About, he's, he's a scholar of the Bible. Yeah, uh, and yeah. Uh, he is very um, clear about keeping his faith o away from his scholarship. Oh, okay, and I believe him. I mean, he's he's he seems very intelligent and knowledgeable about this. All I'm saying is, I don't understand it because I don't understand how there could be a world without the idea of homosexuality. But apparently, that's true. And he makes the point that um, when the Bible talks about that, it's more about uh, power. And it's more about, um, uh, you know, someone who has the assertive role having power over somebody else. Does, it doesn't, I, say, I, it doesn't I, even say that. No, well, no. I mean, look, look, I'm not, no. a, I'm not a biblical scholar. Okay, who am I to argue yeah. with? A bit? I'm not going to, you know, who am I to I, argue with a biblical yeah. scholar? But if I just read what it says, it doesn't say anything about no, power. No, I get it. You know. I, I, I do understand. No, all I'm saying, it's a little quibble. Uh, his his videos are really good on this. Uh, just just look into it. I, 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 I'm I, pretty I sure I follow him. I follow. I think I know. I think I, I know. Uh, I follow him, but I, I guess I never see I mean, him in my videos. A lot of it is uh, behind it is the argument to say that the Bible does not, in fact, talk about homosexuality and the, like the things that they talk about in the Bible don't it really does. relate to it. It does in Romans. Mm. In Romans, it talks mm, about yeah. it. It talks about it. No, in, no, no. In, yeah. Sorry. Uh, no. <sighs> I, no, okay. this is funny. It's two atheists don't... arguing about what the Bible says. <laughs> um, all I'm saying, no, please, please have a look. Uh, no, because I think once uh, you see like what he says about that, it's a really good case to use against Christians who say that the Bible uh, mm, says that homosexuality is wrong. So uh, just have a look. And that's that's the only quote I got. I love what you're doing. I Thanks, man. loved your videos that you've been doing. That, that's thank, it. You, thank, thank you. Thank you, Greg. Thank you so much. I appreciate your, I appreciate watching, man, and thanks for the um, for coming up here and sharing that insight with us. Thank you. All right. <clears throat> hello, 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 hello. How old are you? Yeah, I'm 20 years old. All right. Are you a Christian? Uh, I would say I'm a follower of Jesus. Okay. What you got for us? No, I didn't expect this, but let's do it. So, one of the things I was typing is that reading the Bible without the Holy Spirit produces ignorant people. I myself, I would read the Bible, right? And I wouldn't understand it because the Holy Spirit wasn't over me. Most of the things that the Bible teaches is spiritual stuff right and the holy spirit where it brings you into that realm because we're ask, in the physical let me, ask, realm. let me ask you a question okay go ahead <clears throat> if if you if you capture a woman because you think she's beautiful and you want her to be your wife if you capture her and take her to your house and then after 30 days you go into her are you, is that grape You said if Could you repeat the question? My bad. If you see a beautiful woman who you desire, uh -huh. okay, and, and you're in a battle and you and you kill her parents and capture her and you take her to your house and and let her mourn for her parents for thirty days and then you go into her, is that is that raping her? Is that what? Is that raping her? Oh, 
<laughs> Where are you getting these questions from? I just want to know. I just want to know if you think that that's if, if that's rape. If you if you see a beautiful woman in a ba in a battle, and you want her to be your wife, and you 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 kill her family, and you capture her, and you take her captive. And you take her to your house where she'll mourn for her parents for 30 days. And after she's done mourning, you go into her and make her your wife. Is that, is that rape? That's not God's will for me. Is that rape, sir? That's all I want to know. Yes or no. Okay. It depends okay. on so, other person's No, you said decision. yes. That's rape. That's rape. That's, so if you capture a woman and take her to your house and go into her, that's rape, right? Yeah. Okay, so in Deuteronomy 21, 10 through 14, God says that you're allowed to uh, go out into battle, and if you see a beautiful woman and have desire for her as a wife, bring her home to your house. There she will cut off all of her hair and from her head and cut her nails. She will change the clothes she wore when you took her away. She will have sorrow for her father and mother for one month, and, that, and after that you may go into her and, she, and be her husband, and she will be your wife. God supports grape. <sighs> He's just cherry picking scripture <laughs> at this point. Wait, wait. This is literally a paragraph about Have what God says. Have you heard the gospel, though? Have you heard the gospel? <laughs> Have you heard the gospels? So, like, sir, this I, is I this is a paragraph. Things that you you had under Christianity, and sir, it hold, says hold on. He his flesh. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Don't pivot. Don't pivot. This is a, this is an entire paragraph. It says it's literally titled "Marrying a Woman Taken in Battle." This is what God thinks. God thinks it's morally permissible. If you see a beautiful woman in battle, that you can capture her and take her to your house and grape her and make her your wife. And you agreed, before I even told you that that's in the Bible, you agreed that, yes, that would be rape. You so do see that. God supports, God supports rape. Would you like to go on to murder now? Let's go ahead. All right. Is it, is it, is it murder if you kill a baby? Yes, like abortion and all. <clears throat> sure, yeah. Are you against abortion? Yes, because that's the soul. Okay, so so is it is it always wrong to kill a baby? In God's time, like when he had told that that one story of Emelik, right? That's what I'm referring to. Yeah, in First Samuel. Told Saul. Yeah. Right. Was that murder when God when God killed babies? Do you know where babies go after death, sir? Can you answer the question? I'm, I want to ask you that though. Do you know is where it, they go? Is it murder if you kill a baby? Yes. Okay, so God supports murder. Okay, because God commanded mur babies to be murdered. Okay, you want to move on to slavery now? Did you know that we're all slaves? I'm not a slave. Nobody owns me. Are you sure? Yeah. Who owns That's you? That's how I know you are. Who you, owns you? Did you know that? So I had my encounter with Jesus this year. And before that, I was a slave. You know to what? Who owned you? Who? Huh? Satan himself. Oh, I'm, no, I'm not talking about, um, I'm not talking about like metaphorical sin, right? I'm talking about owning another person as property for life. Brother, we're slaves in the spiritual realm. I'm not talking about like metaphorical slavery. I'm talking about physical slavery. I'm talking about physically being owned by another person as property for life. And you're allowed to beat that person too. God says in, in Leviticus 25 that it's morally permissible for, his, for the Israelites to own non-Israelites as slaves, for, as property for life. And you're allowed to beat them with a rod. You may read it to you? Um... You haven't read your Bible. No. You, I'm you more said, in the New Testament than the Old Testament. Wait, because but the hold Old on, Testament but, won't save you. But that's not how you read a book, sir. How do you read a book? You open it up, right? Start with page one, and then you read it to the end. That's how you read a book. Why is the Bible the only book that when you don't read it from front to cover, like you're, like every other book on earth? Would it be rational for you to just open it up, like you know, three quarters of the way through and start reading? No, you start you start at page one and go all the way to the end. That's how you read a book. Well. Well, when I was like eight years old, I was forced to go to church, right? And I never knew the gospel. And when I came, I'm 20 years old, right? So last year, I was tired of living the way I was living. 
and I knew about this one God. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna try it out. I'm older now. Out of my own will, I started chasing who this God was, right? So you, so you want a relationship with a God that supports raping women, murdering, and owning people as slaves? Who are we to question God? Uh oh, that's a scary statement. Did you yeah, hear what yeah, I said yeah, earlier? Yeah. All right, all right. Go to when I hear, when every time I hear a Christian, when I hear a Christian tell me, who am I to question God? I would never question God. That's scary to me because if God commanded you to do something, you're not going to question it. You're going to do it. Did you know that we're all evil? Do you okay. think you're good? <laughs> all right. This guy's all right. You're, you're young. It's cool. He's young, guys. Can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. All right. I did not know I was going to join this quick. I'm literally at work right now. So what are your points that you're you're saying that that God supports rape, murder and slavery? Yeah. So what's your uh, how do you get to your basis on what is good? You want to you want to have like a like a more like an objective subjective moral argument? Yo, yeah, well, your background where, where noise is really really loud. Mor morality it comes from my own empathy of the of the consequences of my actions. Okay, so is that a cultural thing? Is that a societal thing? It is it, a. It, it could be, yeah. Okay, so. Where does your do morality you come from? Do you take my morality comes from God? Oh, really? So when God says that you can go and capture a woman yep. and take her to your house and go into her and grape her, that's good to you? See, I've read that verse and I've thought about it. And so I think you're going under the presumption that God is not holy and he's not righteous. Okay, so you're, so you God is holy means uh, like like set apart from or something like that, right? Yeah. So uh, holy, it really, if you really boil it down, it means absence of sin. So holy is is perfect. Okay. So, so are you are, are you saying that God that God is not all good? No, I am saying he is all good. Okay. If God he, is all if God is all if God is all good then your morality comes from this all good God, then whatever God thinks is morally permissible is good. So if God says it's morally permissible to capture a woman and take her to your house and, and grape her and make her, make her your wife, then that is good to you. So grape is a strong term. Uh, well, so let me ask you this. Uh, let, me, let me ask you this, Kirk. Yeah. Like, let's just take, let's take uh, God out of it. Take the Bible out of it. We're not even talking about God or anything like that. Okay. If, if you see a beautiful woman and you desire her to be your wife and you capture her and you take her to your house and go into her, is that, is that rape? Well, you're on the pretense that I am okay with kidnapping a woman in the first place or No, 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 no. I'm not asking you. I'm just asking you if a guy if a guy captures well, a woman. I, you're, if you're asking me, then I'm giving you my answer. That's no, I didn't I didn't ask um like if you would do this. I'm asking like if a guy does this. If a, if a guy captures a woman and takes her to her house and goes into her, has that woman been great? See, if you're asking me this and it is actual grape, then yes. Now, in the context of the Bible verse you're saying, you That's are not exactly looking what into, happens. You are yes. not looking into the pretense of the woman's life. You're not looking into the pretense of the man's life. That is exactly what happens in Deuteronomy 21, 10 through 14. No, God, I know. I God it. says it literally, it literally does say that. But you're also okay. you're under the pretense that this back then women were literally not perceived as valuable as men is that correct i, I agree yeah okay so her life before going into a jewish household which <laughs> god already has laws on how you're supposed to treat your wife you're supposed to be a god honoring man and you're supposed to treat so, your wife and love her so you're you're presuming that her life before she got captured was better than the life even in the 30 days that this is she disgusting was this is disgusting her, this is disgusting kirk Kirk, this is absolutely disgusting. You're, you're acting. You're, you're acting trying to like, justify. You're trying to no, justify you're, you're capturing. Trying to go on a hold on, no, level. hold on. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. This is this is absolutely garbage. This is disgusting. 
Christian, you're a Christian, Kirk, and you're trying to justify a story in the Bible where God says it, it's you're morally permissible to capture a woman and take her to your house and, and make her your wife and go into her, and you're saying that, well, it's her, she's going to have a better life than the life she's living now, right? That's what you're saying? That is absolutely disgusting, Kirk. How how can you decide that or not? You're you're like you're you're giving a pretense on someone's worth on their life before you've even seen it. All I want to know is all I want to know is is if do you agree with God when God says that you're allowed to capture a woman and take her to your house and make her your wife? Are you a are you a historian at all? Do you know sir, the, sir, sir. Do you know the pretense of the wars back then? Do you know sir. that other civilizations would have not even let can you, you can you please answer my question directly? Civilizations would not even let you mourn your parents. They would just rape you as soon as they captured you. Oh, maybe oh, maybe so so the then, fact that so the fact that he let her mourn for one month before he went into her makes it better? Is it is it um, is it better than not letting her mourn at all? Is it better than not letting <laughs> her have a choice? And it also says that if the man does not desire her to be his wife, then he. I can't. I can't. I can't. Well, yeah, he captured her, but he didn't just rape her right away. He waited a month, you know. But officer, I waited thirty days. Officer, I, officer, I, I did. I captured her and I took her home. But I didn't rape her right away, right? Because I'm a gentleman. I waited 30 days, officer. <sighs> the amount of Christians that will try to justify this is fucking blowing my mind right now. Hey, how are you? How you doing? I'm doing well. So I don't want to debate, but I, I, I can explain that and have a dialogue here. Uh, you said uh, Deuteronomy, Deuteronomy 21. This is, a, this, is a, this is a debate stage. This is a debate stage. Only send a guest request if you're uh, looking for some, looking to debate. This is a debate stage. <clears throat> choose, choose the bear over God. Everyone keep tap, uh, spamming the likes, everybody. Keep tapping the likes, everyone. And, and make sure you click the follow button if you're not following me already, guys. Hello, Hampton? Hampton? To be fair, Honor. To be fair, Your Honor, I gave her 30 days. Okay? To be fair, Your Honor, right? I, yeah, I captured her. I kidnapped her. I thought I thought I saw her. I thought she was looking good. I captured her and I took her to my house. And I'm a gentleman. I didn't just get right to it. I waited a month, Your Honor. I waited 30 days. I let her cry over her dead parents that I just killed for 30 days, and then I went into her. And people who keep asking what that verse was, it's Deuteronomy 21: 10 through 14. Deuteronomy 21, 10 through 14. I'll, I'll just read it. When you go out to battle against those who hate you and the Lord your God gives them to you and you make them go with you and you see a beautiful woman and have desire for her as a wife, bring her home to your house. There she will cut off all the hair from her head and cut her nails. She will change the clothes she wore when you took her away and stay in your house. She will have sorrow for her father and mother for one month. After that, you may go into her and be her husband and she will be your wife. You gotta wait 30 days, guys. You can't just jump the gun. Be be a gentleman. Wait 30 days. Hello. Hello, how you doing? Good. Are you a Christian? So what exactly are you talking about here? Because I'm confused about, like, you're talking about rape and stuff. So it kind of sounds you? like you're talking to a judge or something. Uh, <laughs> no. Are you a Christian? Yeah. Okay, so yeah, I was just talking about uh, in Deuteronomy twenty one ten through fourteen, where God says uh, it, you're morally permissible. It's morally permissible if you see a beautiful woman in a time of battle, uh, and if you want to make her your wife, you can capture her and take her to your house, mm -hmm. and then after she mourns for her parents for thirty days, that you then you can go into her and make her your wife. Uh, let me actually look that. What was it again? Deuteronomy twenty one. 10 through 14. Uh, sir, sir, if you swipe out of the app, we can't hear you, so make sure you stay in the app. I can read it to you if you want. You want me to read? I just read it. If you, you want me okay, to read it to you. Sir. 
You want me to read it? Oh, he left. I don't know if he meant to leave. He might have accidentally left because it looked like he was trying to um, look it up. Guys, if you're Christian and you want to come up here and talk to me, please have your Bible with you. It makes it so much easier if you have your Bible with you. You're not doing that. Hello? Okay. Hello? 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 Bro. Hello? Yes, hello. So, why do you say Jewish zombie in, in that in there? How, how old are you? I'm nine, I'm 20. I just turned 20. Okay. Uh, yeah, it's just like a little meme I saw on... No, yeah, but why would why would you put it up? Obviously, you agree that it's a zombie, right? It just, it just seems funny. It just oh, Okay, so like, what's your stance on like the whole like zombie thing then? Uh, what do you mean? Like, what's my stance on zombies? No, like, well, I'm, assu I'm assuming you, you like agree with your little meme here, right? Saying he's a Jewish zombie. Uh, yeah, and it just, if that's what the story tells, it just sounds funny, yeah. Like, so you believe he's a zombie? N no, but you do. <laughs> no, I don't. I'm, I'm asking you, you don't even know yet. You said, you said you're a Christian. I am Christian. So yeah, so you believe in this little zombie guy well, who came back to- I'm trying to get where you, what you believe in first. Like, obviously oh, you I, know what I believe in, I believe, in, so it, I believe in facts. figure you out. I believe in facts. So what's the fact? Like, there's all kinds of facts. Okay. I, I believe, I, I believe in, I believe in when things. When it comes to Jesus, though. Oh, like, I think Jesus probably existed, right? But I don't think he rose from the dead like a zombie. So, oh, you don't, so you don't think he rose from the dead? I just said I believe in facts. <laughs> The fact is, he showed himself over f to 500 people after he rose from the dead. They went back to that, his tomb and he was empty. That's a claim. Empty. That's a claim. No, it's not a claim. If people w died for okay. it, Pro prove that. Proving it's in the Bible, bro. Yeah, the, the Bible is the claim. The claim that he rose from the dead. Yeah, that's a claim. It's a truth claim. What? Prove it. I, it's historical history. He did rise from the dead. Prove that he rose from the dead. Disprove it. Why don't you disprove I'm, it? I'm not making any claims here. Well, you're just kind of being, you're open to everything but certain to nothing. I, I just said I don't believe in supernatural things. Exactly. I'm not convinced. You don't believe in anything. No, I believe in facts. You, ju you just said you don't believe, and then you're going to say you believe in facts. That's I said I don't believe in anything yourself. I said I, I said I don't believe in supernatural things, but I believe in facts. So you believe that humans like kind of dictate like what's right and wrong, essentially? Uh, like, are, you want to pivot to morality, or do you want to talk about? Yeah, we can pivot to morality. So, what? You th your morality is objective. No, mine is that I believe that, for example, if you decide to kill somebody in any situation, it's right or wrong. It, it doesn't depend on your personal life experience, or it doesn't depend on your trauma for you to kill somebody. That's justified as right or wrong. Jesus I, I, laid down the line and said. In no situation is it right to kill somebody unless obviously they break into your house, which is now self-defense. Is is Jesus God? I believe I believe in the Holy Trinity. Yes. So if Jesus so is God, one, one times one times one. What, <laughs> sir? If Jesus if Jesus is God, then he's the God of the he's entire the Son of God. Okay, so he's so he so so you, yes, he's the do you Son of God. Do you worship Jesus? I worship that he's the son of God and acknowledge that he died for our sins and will come a second time. So who's your who's your God? We believe that Jesus is the son of God and he reveals the God through Jesus. So who so Jesus is God? No, we believe so, that Jesus is the son of God. So who's your God? He comes through Jesus. He revealed himself who, through who Jesus. Who does? Who does? Jesus reveals himself, God reveals himself through Jesus. Okay, so if Jesus isn't God, then I don't want to talk about Jesus. I want to talk about your God, okay? Okay. So your God of the Christian Bible supports slavery, murder, and rape. Prove it. Okay, so in Leviticus 25, 44 through 46, mm -hmm. God, told, God told the Israelites that they can own non-Israelites as slaves for life. Okay, that's God supporting slavery. And you're allowed to beat your slave with a rod, okay? As far as murder goes, in 1 Samuel 15, 3, God commanded King Saul to go and kill Amalekite babies and children and pregnant women. And in, in Exodus, 21, Exodus 20, 13, God commands that gay people be put to death. That's murder. 
Okay. So as far as as far as graping goes, like they went and rebelled against God, and then they see the wrath of God. So the babies, the babies. <laughs> What do you mean the babies? Jesus says in his Bible that in generations they will be cursed. If some, if you drink alcohol, I, I don't want to. I don't care about what Jesus consumes, says. If a person consumes, sir, I don't care about what Jesus says. I, Jesus isn't God, so I'll, I want to talk about your God. I don't care what but Jesus God says. God reveals Himself through Jesus. Okay, so Jesus is God then? No. Oh my gosh! If I take a picture of you, is it you? Is 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 the actual physical picture of me? Yeah. No. No. It's it reveals you though. It shows your features, your hair, your face, everything. But, but I don't want to talk. I can but tell if, what you look like. I can get plenty of information just, just from that picture. I don't have to see you. It's but it reveals enough information about. I just you. I just want to talk about your God. I don't want to talk about. But Jesus. he reveals himself through Jesus. It, that's fine. He literally that's, said you don't get through the Father through me. And that's, that's fine. Exactly but, what but, you guys don't understand. I don't care if God reveals himself through Jesus. Yes, Jesus. you do because if you're trying to get to my god you have to go through jesus first okay okay so do you know what the very first verse of the bible is do you know the very first verse in the bible genesis genesis if you 1 have 1 the bible in front of you don't expect me to have everything off the top of my head that's fine that's fair but listen all right, genesis, all right, cool, let's, let's do that don't try to like beat me into some like sir relax 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 thank relax. you, thank you. Relax. genesis 1 1 the very first verse of the bible it says in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth okay when it says god there in the beginning god created the heavens and the earth when it says god there is that jesus no that's god that's god okay that's what i want to talk about i don't want okay. to talk about jesus i want okay, to talk about perfect. god so okay. when when you want to talk about god and like you said he created the heavens and the earth he can't create earth if he's in earth he's outside okay. of our realm and space and time okay that's fine that's fine now I, you asked me to prove my like why god supports slavery murder or rape i gave you all the verses now refute the refute, refute those verses prove me wrong i just said that when you when you disobey god he clearly says that your future kids will suffer from your sins and it's like that even in today's world if you as a Wait, parent hey. are an alcoholic your children will suffer from that Wait, so you're all loving, all good God punishes? No, it's not necessarily all loving. Sir, it's all sir. it's it's justice based. It's so you're all you're system. all good. In a you're courtroom, all... you in a courtroom the, the we ha we feel empathy for the criminal, but we don't let that get to us from serving justice. So you're saying that you're all good, all loving God punishes innocent children for the crimes of their parents? Yes, you you suffer your sins of your forefathers. Yeah, your God's a piece of shit, sir. But God, it, well, God's God is not punishing those babies by not sending them he, to heaven. He ordered them to he, be killed. He ordered for the forefather to pay their sins. He commanded King Saul to go and unkill the Amalekite babies. I don't I don't think you're seeing what I'm seeing, or you're reading or interpreting it the right way. Is it always wrong to kill a baby? I don't think it is. Is, it's you don't think it's always but it's wrong. not but it's not necessarily to mean that it's the baby's fault either that doesn't mean the baby's yeah, going you're, to hell the that's baby, the, you're implying okay so are you against abortion am i against abortion i'm not trying to get all political right now you said you wanted to talk about my god well, don't just well, start flip-flopping this around well, you said baby you said that it's okay for god to kill the babies because they go god to heaven never killed babies like you said he he, he in, never in killed first anybody. samuel 15 3 god commanded king saul to go and kill the babies so he he never you can't say that caught so god didn't kill the baby so in, uh, yeah god flooded the earth and drowned all, all, all so, the people uh, on the so, earth and babies too P babies pregnant women he what in 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 genesis 6 6 god flooded the earth and drowned all the babies on the earth like i said that's a sin that was paid from their forefather if you as okay an so is that you, murder you're producing you're an alcoholic you're gonna produce an alcoholic baby is that murder to kill a baby yes it is okay god supports murder right okay god supports murder he doesn't support murder you just said you just said that it's murder to kill a baby it is murder to kill a baby okay god kills babies no so he God never killed anybody yes in genesis god flooded the earth and killed every single being on the earth including babies and pregnant women and then he and he restored humanity through that's he murder you said that was murder you it, said that was murder what is oh my gosh you said killing babies is murder so god killed babies therefore god murders therefore god supports murder god commands gay people to be murdered he commands them but he loves them so much and gives them free will to oh do he loves them he loves them so much that he wants them to die 
if you decide to go play on the 405 freeway and decide that it's not right but you still go out and do it anyway what is it are god you Fokker? what are you even what are you even yapping about i'm telling you that even though god commanded to do it he still chose to do it it's a free will this earth is free will so so was it good or bad when they followed god's bad. command it's good uh, it what it was good or bad when they follow god's command to go and kill gay people when it was more well, obviously in that time it was bad and it still is so, bad. so god commanded bad. god commanded something bad against the bible and wait you just god said says, you just said god you just said god commanded something bad well you don't is, is homosexuality not a sin no it's not a sin you just said that homosexuality just, isn't a thing you said it was bad when god you commanded, said homosexuality isn't a sin so why wouldn't god punish those who sin homosexuality is not a sin sir there's nothing wrong with being gay okay according to the bible according to the bible it is wrong according okay, to god it is so wrong. if i'm a christian and i believe in the bible why but it's you not but but you said when god commanded gay people to be killed you said that that was wrong so so you're saying god commanded something god wrong punish, okay let me get this straight because i don't think you're saying god's punishment for any type of sin is death that's why we never live up to the standards and we need his grace to be saved so was it good or wrong when god commanded gay people to be killed if you go against if you sin against god was it good or wrong was it good or wrong when god commanded that i think it was good because they were going against sin they were sinning see, against god and, see you're actually a disgusting person because there is nothing wrong with being gay there's nothing wrong with somebody loving who they want to there love is consensually with being gay. well then but, well then why do you think it was good well then if there's nothing wrong with it well then why do you think it's good when god wanted them to die because god created humans to reproduce when you are homosexual you can't reproduce so an infertile so woman you're you're kind of just cutting off your whole family's bloodline being gay. gay okay so an infertile woman can't reproduce is it wrong for her to have sex with a guy i think she should still have a set of morals because just because you can't have a baby doesn't necessarily mean you can go out sleeping and breaking other men's hearts <clears throat> you're just like that typical loving christian that everyone loves so much and you're just a typical you think that you think that gay people should be killed everything and open enough and certain nothing you think gay people should be killed? i don't i have bro i've talked and worked with gay people i don't condone gay people do they, do do they know do they know that you you do you do they do the, do the people like that you worked with do, do they know that do they know that you think that it's good for them to die i don't i don't plead death on anybody i'm not god you're acting like i you, commanded. you said it was good for for god to command gay people i think to be if killed. you if you sin against god you you should definitely be punished for it okay so why why is being gay a sin i just told you why god because created us to reproduce and to love okay women, okay so so by, if you follow that line of logic then it, then men who are infertile and women who are infertile should not be having sex that's not what i said because they can't reproduce god is sex is still a gift god gave to everybody to enjoy with one person and well, the it says well then why does he woman. well then why does he want gay people to be killed because they, because they're going up they're sinning against him why is it a sin he just told i just told you he if he creates us to reproduce and you decide not to reproduce you're kind of killing the bloodline of hey, humans. Yes, the, the argument that gay people can't reproduce is ridiculous because they can. They're going to choose not to, but they can. Name one man that has gave birth. No, no, no. What I'm saying is that they have the <laughs> ability to reproduce. Just because they're attracted to the same sex doesn't mean they lose their ability to reproduce. So that's a so, terrible so argument. Would you, so you're telling me a gay man would willingly have reproduce with the woman even though he's gay that's a, that's a different argument you said no it's not you because said that's it was the bad hypothetical because laying in front of me you there are plenty of gay people who have kids yes and you said it was bad because they cannot reproduce they absolutely can they're choosing not to reproduce okay, so is it so is it bad to choose not to reproduce then is that is that what's wrong with being gay i i wouldn't say that's necessarily wrong with being gay i think even if you're straight and decide not to reproduce i think that's still kind of the same issue that god put so us you, on think that to you think that it's bad when people choose not to reproduce that should be that should be punished by eternal i think i believe that you should everybody should have the motive to reproduce 
but obviously God has different timing for everybody and situations are different. For example, if you, for example, I'm pretty sure you're going to bring up the rape debate. If somebody is raped, oh, should they keep the child? I think in that situation, no, I wasn't. I, that's not where I was going with this. I was addressing what you said about why being gay is bad, is wrong. You said it was because they can't reproduce. That's not true. I said because they're choosing not to reproduce. And if I did say that, you're right. No, now you're changing. That wrongly. Okay, so, so, so people who choose not to have kids should be damned to eternity in hell. I think if they looked for God and his forgiveness for what, like I said, for not reproducing and for what we, like I said, well, having which, said, which one is it? Is it because, is which one is it? Is it because they reproduce. can't, is it because they can't reproduce or is it because they choose not to? Which because one? Because they choose, because they're, they can because they're choosing not to. So, so you think people who choose not to have kids should be damned to hell? I, that's not what I believe. That's what my God believes. Where, where does God say that people who don't have kids should go to hell? He actually encourages, Paul encourages people not to get married. Married and having single. kids are a whole different thing. Okay, but you're not supposed to have kids outside of marriage. No, you're not. Okay, so those people should be damned to hell because they're not getting married, therefore they're not having kids? This shit makes no, no sense, mean, bro. What do you mean they're not having, what do you mean they're not getting married? What does that even mean? The Bible encourages single people to stay single. Where does it say that? You're going to have to look it up because I don't know. Uh, why would I look it up if you're the one claiming it? I got you, bud. Let me let me grab it for you one sec. Keep tapping those likes, everybody. Keep tapping the likes. Make sure you drop days of follow, guys. Follow days. So it's in First uh, Corinthians 7. Verses eight through nine. Hey, guest, guest. He doesn't have a name. It just has a dash. Guest, if you leave the app, we can't hear you. So if you're talking right now, we can't hear you. You got to come back to the app. So it says first Corinthians. I'm just trying to I'm looking up the verse he's looking at. What is it? First Corinthians seven. Yeah. Seven, eight through nine says now to the unmarried and the widows, I say it is good for them to stay unmarried as I do. This is Paul speaking. Um, and then nine says, if, but if they cannot control themselves, they should marry for it is better to marry than to burn with passion. Yeah. So by your logic, you would be, you would argue that God wants people, the people who don't, uh, if people if people can't control themselves and they want to have sex they need to get married first but if they they should stay single wait what so so you're saying that you're saying that that god sends people to hell for not wanting to have kids right like what do you mean not okay, like like i'm not saying you should base your whole life on just like like having kids but if you don't plan on reproducing that's also going that's also going against god the same okay, way the it way is being, way though, being anything else the way that this started is the reason why you said being gay was wrong was they cannot reproduce they can we already debunked they that. can they can right if okay. a gay person wasn't gay they'd be able to reproduce okay so why is it wrong to be, then why is it wrong to be gay then Dude, I feel like I've told you this a couple times already, you know? No, you, no we, we've debunked what you first said. Now, so why is it now? Why is it wrong to be gay? It's not because you can't reproduce. We, we've already moved past that. Where did you go? <laughs> what were you saying pretty one time? Why is it wrong to be gay? Because in the Bible, it also... Not only... If we're going to talk about aside from sexuality, like you said, right? Like you said... Like, because you guys said, aside from the reproduced part, why is it bad to be gay? Correct? I'm just we're making at, sure we're on the same asking, page. We're, you, you said it was because they can't reproduce, but they and can. You guys, and you guys said you guys debunked the sexuality part and the reproduction no, part. We, no, we, we've demonstrated to you that gay people can reproduce. Gay people can I have kids. I never believed that they couldn't reproduce. Why is being gay wrong? Because in the Bible, it says one man, one woman, and those are to reproduce. Okay, but we but gay people can reproduce. So why is it wrong? Because they're but choosing you're, not to. You're, you're what you're you're basically because they're choosing you're, not you're basically to. just saying that gay you're, people. You're you're basically saying that it's wrong to be gay because my little dirty dusty old book says so. Wait, read that. Say that one more time. You're saying 
that it's wrong to be gay because this little zombie guy in this book I am not saying says so I'm not saying it's wrong to be I honestly I'm gonna be honest I'm not I'm not the one who's the ones that says oh it's wrong to be gay because of this I follow it and I just agree with it yeah that's that you're you're a shitty person for thinking that gay people should be put to death I don't think they should be put to death so when God says to put them to death you said that you agree with that I like I said, I don't necessarily agree with it, but I don't disagree with it. It's just okay. okay. Me, so you, that's so what you, he so decided to do, and I'm I don't participate in that, so it doesn't. So so everything that God commands is good, right? Do you believe being gay is good? I don't think it's good or wrong. Okay, it's just, so then it's, why, it's would, why would he, it's, su why would he support being it gay? Is you don't even think it's good, why sir? Would he support it? Sir, being gay isn't good or wrong. It's just natural. It's just a natural thing. It's no, it's not. It's not. It's not. It's amoral. It's nothing good or bad about it. It's just. It's just a sexual preference. No, I think I think it's more than that. I think sex is sacred and it's something you share with a woman. Why? Why should why should it only be done between a man and a woman? Why? Why should it be done be done between man and man? I'm asking you why sex should be done between a man and a woman. Because in the Bible it says one man, one woman, and those are so. What you're saying is that you're, you're saying it's wrong to be gay because this this Jewish zombie guy says in my little three thousand year old book that it's wrong. What does th having three thousand years have to do with it? Because your book was written by a bunch of ancient barbaric goat herders that didn't know where the sun goes at night. And that's who you get your morality from. You're getting your morality from a bunch of ancient goat herders who didn't know where the sun goes. Uh, if a man were to die and rise from the dead, I'd, ha I'd listen to everything he has to say. Yeah, well, you haven't demonstrated that Jesus rose from the dead. I have. No, people you didn't. died because they saw it. He's sh have, you ever, just a claim. have you ever stood in front of 500 people? That's just a claim. No, it's it's his Prove it. Prove it's, it. It's in the Bible. How the Bible, sir, something? the Bible is Proof the claim. Prove to me that George Washington was the, was the president. Sir, that's an entire different claim. No, it's not because you're yes. asking me to prove something that happened no. out of my control. I'm asking you, like, I, I'm telling you that Jesus may have existed, right? But I don't believe he rose from the dead. That's an entire separate claim. If why you do said, you not, why if do you, you said, not believe he rose from the dead? If you said George Washington existed, I'd be, I'd be like, okay, fine. But if you said George Washington rose from the dead like a zombie, that would require further, a lot more uh, higher evidence than if Jesus, if George Washington it existed. Would require more evidence than just twelve people dying it would, it would require more evidence than a three thousand year old book that was written by ancient goat herders that didn't know where the sun goes at night what does what does their job have to do with seeing what they saw <laughs> sir but the, my point is that the bible is the claim the bible is claiming that jesus rose from the dead making the same claim that you are so you can't point to the bible to prove that jesus rose from the dead the bible is also just the claim so no, the Bible is is a is a is a whole sum of books and witnesses that were there. Prove it. it what do you what do you mean prove it? It's in the Bible. Have the Bible is the claim. You're saying the you're saying Jesus rose from the dead because my little Bible says so. I'm saying Jesus rose from the dead because he said he was going to do it and then on top of that they went where? to his, where, his where did he, where did he say that? Where did he say that? Where did he say he was going to return again? Yeah. All right, do you, I'm gonna go find. It. It's in. Wait, where did? It, where at? In the Bible? Yes. The Bible is the claim. What do you mean, oh, bro? The Bible isn't proof or evidence of anything. The Bible is a book of claims. No, the the there's stuff, dude, bro. Okay. The Bible is made up of witnesses and people that were with him, that stood and walked with him. The Gospels it's not were written. About the Bible. The Gospels. It's not the Bible itself. It's what's in the Bible. It's what can, what's in the Bible. It's the witnesses, and it's the all, Gospels. That the we, Gospels were written by anonymous authors decades after the supposed Jesus resurrection. No, they weren't. No, uh, isn't a refutation. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna move on to the next guy, guys. <clears throat> thanks for uh, letting me. Yeah, <laughs> thanks, Dave. Actually, I think I think I'm just gonna hop off. Actually, 
I'm gonna, no worries. Um, let me take one more guess if you want to hang out here. I'm gonna take one more guess. Oh, okay, I'll hang out. Let's see. Let's look for a good one. Guys, type in the comments if you can if you can come up here and cook me. I want to take I want to take somebody who thinks they can come up here and cook. If you want to come up here and cook, type uh, spam the fire emojis. Send spam this, send this live to your pastors, guys, or to your to your deacons or priests or whatever. If you're in the guest request and you think you can come up here and cook, s spam the fire emojis. Okay, Raquan. Raquan, I don't see you in the guest request, Raquan. Oh yeah, there you are. Let's take Raquan. Um, well, first of all, it's Raquan. Oh, Raquan, sorry. What's yeah, hey, Raquan, twenty-two to go. My, it's, it's all right. Um, okay, so the 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 dude that was just on here, you were talking to him about like the gay stuff, right? And like putting them in death. Okay, so I'm waiting for you to cook, man. Come that on. that exact book, that's Leviticus, right? Or or one of the things, right? It's Exodus, uh, Exodus twenty thirteen, I think. Okay, Exodus, Exodus, right? Well, that that time was different. The the Old Testament, a lot of the stuff in the Old Testament is, doesn't apply to us anymore because because Jesus came, right? So that certain thing during the time, everybody but the Israelites were doing gay stuff and all that. So that's why it like kills them and whatever, you know. Like, waiting for you, I'm waiting for you to cook, man. I'm waiting for you to cook. I thought you were gonna come up here and cook. I, oh, I'm not. I just want to do. I just want to. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, look. Well, look. God, I'm just like um, explaining it, you know. God's morality never changes, right? Would Would you agree? Yeah. So, so God thinks that it, that gay people should be put to death. God thinks it's morally that, that's permissible. Not, that's not his morality, though. Yeah. Yes. God thinks. I mean, like, God thinks that. Like it's 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 not like his sir. His morality. Uh, sorry, sorry. Your Your God thinks that that being gay is immoral. Yeah, that's why he wants them to die. He still thinks it's immoral, but he doesn't want them to die necessarily. Well, your yeah. God's morality never changes. His mor yeah, okay. All, all I, all I want to know is, do you yeah, agree yeah. with do you agree with your God when your God says that gay people should be put to death? Do you agree with God? Back then, back then, absolutely yes. Now, absolutely not. What you so we just we've already established that God God never changes. So if yes. God thinks if God thinks that it's morally permissible to kill gay people then it's always morally permissible to kill gay people in God's eyes. Do you agree with God? Do you agree with your God when he says that it's morally permissible to kill a gay person? Back, I'm going to say this again. Back then, yes. Because okay. he doesn't change. However, the people change. Back then, everybody was doing sinful stuff except for the Israelites. Or not except for the Israelites, but like... Kind so, Ray Raekwon, my friend below you, Days... He's gay. Okay, he's gay. Right. So you think that two, two, three thousand years ago, that it would be good to it, kill him? It was him. more like five thousand. You think it would be good to kill him because he's gay? It depends. What do you mean it depends? He, what is he an Israelite or not? <laughs> okay, it, it, this is this is like it, it's like <laughs> it's okay to days. Are you an Israelite? No, not as far as I know. I'm not. Right. He, he's you're, just a, nice, he's just a gay American. So I can wait, Raekwon. You're saying I can suck dick for free and not get punished for it? Now, yeah. That, no, I mean even back then, because I'm not in Israel. Oh, back then, okay, that's that's different. Okay, the the people who were gay back then were horrible people. Why? Were Why? Horrible people. It wasn't Why? just them. It wasn't just them though. It was. It didn't have to do with anything them being gay. It was that. They were you said you said you were gonna come up, you said you were gonna come up here and cook, but you're actually just painting painting yourself as a raging homophobic in front of about oh. four hundred people. I'm I'm not though. I, you I said that I you said gay me. people should be killed, and you said days should back be killed. Then, the guy below you. That was back then. It, it doesn't matter. Your God never changes. Does, your, God never changes. Change. your God never we changes. Change. Your God never we changes. Change. Doesn't we yeah, change. but your God doesn't. Who gives a fuck? It's not you get your morality from God. My live just got flagged. I, I figured that was going to happen. Talking about yeah, e Exodus twenty thirteen, usually that's why I try to stay away from that topic. But I'm going to end the live, guys. I'm going I'm to let you go, Raekwon. All right, all right, all right, man. All right, peace. <laughs> all right, I'm going I'm to end the live, guys. I just got a hate speech uh, violation, so that's usually right. why I try not to talk about Exodus twenty thirteen. But um, thanks, Days. Thanks for coming up here, man. And, yeah, and no, I love you, dude. I love you. Lots of people love you. There's nothing wrong. You know, I don't oh, think no, you should I die. Know. I'm, yeah, no, it's more funny to me than anything. But yeah, I know, I know you're. Thanks, yeah, for, you're having, thanks for having me up, dude. All right, later, bro. See you.
All right, guys. I make sure everybody follow Days. And guys, follow me here. I'm going to end the live really quick before the live gets taken down. Um, and go subscribe to my YouTube, guys. The full live stream is going to be posted on my YouTube. As soon as I end this live here, I'm going to upload it. It should take a few hours. But go subscribe to my YouTube. The link's in the bio. I have all my live streams on there. Cheers, Jack. Have a good one, Jack. Um, if you guys are lighting fireworks tonight, even though it's the 4th of July was yesterday, still sometimes people light fireworks tonight. Uh, please make sure your dogs are inside, guys. Don't let your dogs get scared of the fireworks and try to dig under the gate. Be careful, guys. Don't let your dogs get out. Make sure that they're safe inside. And don't drink and drive tonight, guys. If you're still celebrating the 4th of July weekend, please, please, please don't drink. Don't drink and drive. Just don't do it, man. Call Uber. It's like 20 bucks, maybe even cheaper for an Uber. Please don't do it. And, and make sure your dogs are safe inside when you're lighting fireworks. All right. See you later, guys. If this has been blast, Christians, if this, if this has been blasphemy for you, good, because it was a blast for me, too. See what I did? See what I did there?